In this video, I'll provide a detailed review of my dividend stock portfolio and the dividends that I received from April to June this year. I'll also talk through the stocks that I bought or sold during that time and discuss my investing plans and thoughts along the way. Finally, I'll give a quick update on my income and expenditure for my rental property investments. My portfolio currently stands at £51,774 invested. Reaching the 50k point has always been a target of mine, so I am really pleased to have hit this now. And if you look back at my historic videos, you'll see how this has grown over time. The market value of my portfolio has again seen some volatility, which isn't a surprise. Starting at an 8.29% unrealised gain on April the 1st, having a high of 10.53%, a low of 3.91%, and settling at 6.43% at the end of June. But as a dividend investor, I don't really pay too much attention to the market value of my portfolio, as it's my intention to never sell any of the principal. I'm only ever interested in the income that the portfolio generates through dividends. My investing strategy is to build a cash flow generating asset that pays me a passive income each month. And all dividends are always reinvested back into the portfolio to buy more shares that will pay more dividends. And then I'll just allow the compounding process to do its work. I do have a video explaining my investing strategy in full if you're interested, which I'll link in the description below. Now let's look at what's contributing towards the returns. We can see that the majority of my portfolio is in the green and has yielded a return on my investment. Disney still remains my largest unrealized loss. And also in terms of market value, I'm also quite a way down on 3M, AT&T and Verizon. Breaking that down further, and in the interests of transparency, this is my full portfolio, showing all unrealized gains and losses. I will always be open and honest about my portfolio, and I won't ever try and hide any losses. I want this to be a true and fair reflection of what I'm experiencing, so that people can relate and hopefully learn. Next, we'll have a look at the intrinsic value of my portfolio, based on free cash flows, and this suggests that my portfolio is undervalued at the minute. This valuation model doesn't take into account my ETFs, so it's just the individual stocks that I own. We can see that the market value is around 30k, but based on the free cash flows that the businesses generate, the valuation would be closer to 40k. The apps that I'm using here are Trading212 and Simply Wall Street. If you're interested in starting a portfolio with Trading212, I do have a link in the description where you can use my code and we'll both get a free share worth up to £100. I've also left a link to Simply Wall Street in the description as well, which is a really nice investment tool that I use to evaluate companies and track my portfolio's performance. I've always tried to invest at least £750 each month, and this graph shows how my total amount invested has grown over time. You can see from the upward trajectory on the line graph that I have been really consistent at doing this each and every month. I'm a big believer in paying yourself first, which means that once I get paid my salary, I immediately move £750 into my portfolio. Then throughout the month, I try and keep my spend as sensible as possible without being too restrictive. Then if there is any cash left over at the end of the month, I have the option of paying that into the portfolio as well. In the long term, I want the snowball effect of compounded reinvested dividends to boost my portfolio in a way that the income can start to contribute towards my monthly expenses. My dream is for my dividends to fund my lifestyle and enable me to retire early. But even if I don't achieve this, then I'd hope that the portfolio would help to pay for any family holidays or even allow me to work part time. And I'll let you know how much I'm currently making later on in the video. So let's have a look at the stocks that I've been buying and selling over the last three months. I've spent £3,405 over that period and sold £728. Let's look at what I sold first of all and then we'll look at the buys. I fully sold out of legal in general. I don't think that it's a bad company at all, but I just couldn't see what separates it from competitors. I asked myself what unique strengths does this company have over other insurance companies. As I couldn't really find an answer that satisfied me, and with me looking to reduce the number of holdings that I have, I decided to sell. As always, I'm not a guru, I'm just a normal person trying to improve my financial position. So this decision might turn out to be the right call, or I could live to regret it. 
but all that matters for me is that I'm happy with my decision. Now for the buys, and how I spent that £3,405. As usual, I've topped up my ETFs, with £1,927 spent. I do want the bulk of my portfolio to be ETFs, to give me a solid, safe foundation for income. And I've also bought some more of my blue chip dividend payers when the price became attractive to me and my portfolio. After these buys and sells, this means that the overall yield for my portfolio as a whole currently sits at 3.53%, which equates to around £1,822 per year in predicted dividends, or £152 per month. There will always be a discrepancy between my actual dividends received and my predicted dividends, just due to the timing of me purchasing shares and then being eligible through the X day of the dividends. Now let's look at the dividend income I actually received over April, May and June. In April, I received £124.73 from eight different companies. Notable dividends include £41.90 from Barclays, who pay twice a year, and £29.38 from VHYL. In May, I actually received £79.14 from six different companies. The dividends from AT&T, Greencoat, JP Morgan and Verizon felt like really solid amounts this month, which was pleasing. And finally, to finish up the dividend update, in June I received £379.33 from 14 different companies, including some chunky ETF payments. This is the largest month that I've ever had, and I also received my first ever three-digit dividend, which was really nice. And it was also really motivating to hopefully start receiving more of these in the future. So looking into this graph, which shows all of my dividends since starting investing in 2020, we can see that the numbers have been increasing year on year. If we compare the purple 2020 bars with the blue 2021 bars, the green 2022 bars, and the yellow 2023 bars. The average monthly dividend in 2020 was £45.29. The average in 2021 was £77.88. The average in 2022 was £114.98. And the average in 2023 so far is £143.69. Again, it's not as though I've done anything special to hit these numbers. All I've done is stay consistent with my contributions and dividend reinvestments. If you are a regular viewer to my portfolio updates, you'll know that one of my short to medium term goals was to earn an average of £150 per month consistently. With £51,774 invested and a yield of 3.53%, I have theoretically hit this. So it's time to strive towards a new goal of £200 per month. In order to hit this at the current yield, I would need a portfolio size of around £68,056 and would therefore need to invest around a further £16,380. This might seem like a large amount, and it is, but I like to break these goals down to make them more manageable and achievable. So if I continue to invest £750 per month, plus reinvesting my actual dividend average from last year of £114, I should hit this in around 19 months, so around another year and a half. This is my investing strategy in a nutshell, to consistently contribute towards dividend-paying stocks and ETFs, reinvest all dividends, and have a long-term focus. I have forecasted what my portfolio could become over the next 10 years. I don't want to predict anything other than what I can control, within reason. So I'm assuming that I'll carry on investing at least £750 per month, that the dividend yield of 3.53% stays the same, that all dividends will be reinvested, and that there will be no dividend cuts or raises. It's not the most scientific of estimates, but I find it really motivating to look at what it could evolve into, if I keep doing what I'm doing. We can see that after five years, I could have a portfolio worth 124000 that's generating around £354 a month in dividends. And after 10 years, I could have a portfolio worth around 198000 generating around £564 a month in dividends. 
I'm not naive enough to think that I could retire on £500 a month, but it would definitely help towards paying for bills and expenses, and I'd hope that by this point the snowball effect would really start to ramp up. As always, all dividends received stay in the portfolio and are reinvested into purchasing more shares. My portfolio has earned a total of £3,751 in dividends, and by reinvesting those dividends, it's increased my portfolio value from £48,022 to £51,774, which is a growth rate of around 7.81% so far. As more dividends are received and then reinvested, I do expect this percentage to get larger over time. I also invest in real estate and currently own two buy-to-let properties. I have also recently started to rent out the parking space in one of these properties for £80 per month. So over April to June, this is what the numbers look like. The rental income has remained constant, but I'm now receiving £80 per month from the parking space. The management fee has increased slightly, as my management company are managing the parking space on my behalf. And the mortgage has remained constant. And thankfully, I've not had any repairs or maintenance issues during this time as well. So my pre-tax profit over the period is £2,412. Now that you've heard my portfolio update, I'm always interested to hear from you, the viewers. Do you enjoy these quarterly updates? Or should I do them monthly? And is there anything that I've missed from the video that you'd like to question? Feel free to ask me anything you want in the comments section below. I'll be reading and responding to every message that I can. I hope that you found this video interesting and informative, and I hope that it's given you inspiration and ideas for your own personal finances. If you have, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss out on any future portfolio reviews. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.